Okay, so now the substance part of our project. So, file new. Now I hope none of this changes in new versions of substance, but this should stay the same sort of methodology. It shouldn't be too bad. So we want to go blacksmith hammer, we want to go mesh, we want to go, I'm going to keep my ABJ from the last little bit. And the reason I'm going to keep the ABJ is because I have a high poly ABJ, so that means they're going to be in the same spot in the sort of virtual world, I don't know what you would call it, when they bake the information. I'm going to keep this at a value of a three. I'm going to click this button and import my high poly. Now this value here is basically how much distance between where it's going to pick up the normal, uh, pick up the the change in the mesh from the high poly to low. If you have this very low, if you have a very big scratch or something, it won't pick up the deepness of the scratch if you have it too low value. I keep mine pretty low because Substance really, really takes this information to heart and it's just a bit finicky when you have it a little too high. Um, in fact, I'm not going to make it that low. I'm going to double that and keep it this low. And then we want to bake it. This can take very long depending on the complexity or just how big your asset is. If your asset's like 50 million polys and it's just got a lot of information there, this could take a long amount of time. But for you guys, this will be instant because I'm going to skip it. Cool. So we have a bunch of detail on our asset now. You can see what these nice, whoops, we've got these nice edges. This. Now I could have put more detail on this asset once again. Um, I could have put some scratches on it, but I didn't really want to. I wanted to keep it pretty basic, nothing too special. So, making the material for this. Now I do a very, very, very simple material. I basically get a fill layer. I Okay, I don't get a fill layer, excuse me. I get a folder first. Then in the folder, I get a normal layer, a normal fill layer, there you go. I pop it in my folder. I get the color I want for whichever part I'm working on. We're going to work on the wood first. So I get a very nice wood color. And this is gonna be the base color of our wood. So we, we can go for something medium tone like that. That should be fine. We then right click it. Oh, we right click the folder, sorry. We click black mask. We. Press four. There you go. We click this button here, and that will select the entire mesh when you select it. So I just want that part to be wood, so that's fine. I then want to duplicate. So let me get the right roughness first, actually, for this. So I want it to be pretty rough. It's wood. It's not going to be that shiny. Not going to be metallic. That's fine. I then want to duplicate this to sort of keep the same sort of color. We then want to find. We then want to make the color for our indentations. Or the grain or whatever you want to call it our scratches whatever now i go to about bottom right of whatever i've pretty much selected originally i then go then um, go to smart masks i will then i usually use cavity rust there's a few different ones you can use you can use occlusion you can use probably i don't know more occlusion there's a, probably a few things you can use i will usually just use cavity rust so I change it up a little bit anyway, it doesn't look like rust. So that'll basically just fill in all of our bits like that, which is perfect. It actually works really well at its default values, but I will change it slightly anyway. I want to come into this part. I want to make it slightly just sort of blurred. I want to take over a little bit more, maybe make it a little bit more blurred. Maybe take over a little bit less. I want to contrast it. I want those bits to be very obviously there because of the sort of style I'm going for. And then you can mess around with this till you get the desired effect. Maybe around there, and that looks pretty good. Again, if you mess around till you get your desired effect. You'll get a nice chunky bit here. You can edit that just by, again, moving these bits around, finding it which part's taking that over there. But I like that bit, usually. I like that it takes over the top, because it just makes it look like it's worn down for when you've put the metal part on. Next stage, duplicate this once again. Now we want to use a edge mask on this one. Edge strong. 
I then want to make this lighter. Maybe something like that. Get to where you want. What I'll usually also do is I basically just turn down this. You can set this to multiply if you want. The turn of value. It depends how good it looks when you do that. I tend to just set it as normal to make it about 60%, 70%. And here I do the sort of same thing. So I get the values that I want. Maybe make it a little bit more like that. I then come into our uh, mask again. Blur it a little bit, 0.3. Be nice. Turn down the global blur. I think there's a little too much. Turn up the sharpness. Turn up the blur a tad bit more. Nah, nah, too much. Turn up the global balance. You get your desired effect once again. I still think I need to make this more washed out, so we're going to go something like that. I think my base color may be just not quite right, so again, you could change that to where you want. But, I don't know. It, it, it looks fine, I guess. I don't know, actually. I mean, I have a reference of um, another smart, um, smart material I've saved that I basically did the same thing. So if I drag that in, I can see what colors I use on that one. Cool, so that's the colors I use on that one. They're a lot more orange. So I can copy that. Because it can, sometimes when it comes to browns, I don't always get the brown I want. So there's a bit extra bits, you, yeah, that looks pretty nice actually. A bit extra bits you could do with this, you can um, attach an occlusion, so you could duplicate this one. Take off the mask. Go to Smart Mask again. You can grab an occlusion. And then you can basically fiddle with the occlusion, maybe make it a bit darker than what that is. Up maybe or turn it down, blur up, have it yeah, up, and you'll basically get this like second layer of it. You can even move your highlights underneath, but whoops, not underneath that one, underneath here. But again, it depends what you want. Looks pretty good to me, to be honest. Maybe that is a little too orange. Once again, it's just I'm not the best at getting that perfect wood color a lot of the time. It takes a lot of experimenting. Maybe about there is where I want. Yeah, it looks pretty nice. Now to move on to our next bit. Exact same procedure. Uh, what I do like to do is I like to select these bits and I like to change the roughness of them. I want to make the highlights a little bit sharper and I want to make the indentation, the occlusion or just the cavity mask a little bit less shining. You'll, it won't be too obvious, but you just get that little bit of extra shine for where you want your highlights to be. Next stage. We'll duplicate this and I'll just change the colors to basically match what I want for the metal. I will come up into here, I'll black mask that. I'll select my metal, again press 4, select it. I was clicking that, select it, select it. And we'll get the colors we want for this. So that's going to be the highlights, so it'll turn up. I'm going to get the, these bits, so I'll turn it down, down. That's pretty good. And obviously, it's a metal. So we want to turn our metal up. Now, I don't often like my metal at full strength when I'm doing um, stylized. I have a friend who's the same way. He never used to make his stylized assets metal completely because they just didn't look quite right. So I want to turn up the roughness a little bit. Oh, that's looking a bit better already. Bit too much. What's mid ground look like? Maybe about there. Again, I like to make the highlights higher. So that you see that? The highlights are sharper. You can go over the top if you want. Depends what you're looking for. Again, it's a stylized one. We can go, we could pretty much do whatever you want and put it down to it's just the way we want the style. Cool. Now I want some of this detail to um, sort of pop a bit more so I can come into here and I can mess around with this to basically bring some of this out if we want. Sweet. The problem is, is we sometimes get too much strength coming up here. But in this case, I don't mind that. Again, it just makes it look like it is really put on there. Sweet. 
fine, we'll turn this down. I'll make it into this one. Cool. Cool. A bit too strong for the bottom, if I'm honest. That's pretty good. Again, I didn't put any scratches on this. I probably should have done to give it a bit more detail, but you could do that yourself with ZBrush. And what it would do is it will make it so those scratches come out on those lines. But that's that should be fine. It's again, it's only a basic hammer. We don't want to spend too long on it to begin with. I kind of want the base to be a bit darker, if I'm honest. Yeah, that's a bit better. And sometimes when I do metals, I like to put a tiny bit of orange in there. Just like that. Mm, maybe a little bit less. Boom. Maybe a little bit less. Um, so we maybe so that's nothing. That's a tiny bit. I don't know why. I just think it looks really nice having that little bit in there. Maybe it's because it offsets it from grey. Again, I'm not entirely sure why I enjoy it. I just think it looks a little better. This one's not even giving me it. There you go. So it just gives us that little. So you see that little little bit off color and that's pretty much what we want it, again it's only a basic hammer it's pretty nice so basically export that out is your textures i have this set up in a very certain way but i have this unreal 4 packed i think that comes in i don't know if i made that myself it's been so long but you can just export your textures out whatever you want to use it for they will just export out the way you have them so go to our desktop find the folder we have it in Textures, boom, select, export. All right, so I added a bit of extra detail at the end of my ZBrush video that is not showing here. Basically, if you do ever go back to ZBrush and you do add some extra detail, so if you're following these episodes along, you should have seen the extra detail I added to the end of the video to, do, to basically add this detail back in. As long as you haven't changed too much, just go bake texture. I usually like removing this just in case, but then re-adding it back in. And just re-bake it in. And basically, any detail that you've decided you wanted to add in ZBrush should now go on to your mesh. So if we just skip past this, we will now have all that extra detail we did. Look at that beauty. Absolute gorgeous. Nah, it's not gorgeous, it's all right. But it looks pretty cool, so uh, yeah. All right, now back over to putting it in the Unreal Engine. Again, if you have already explored it before, like I showed earlier, before adding this extra bit, you can just come into here, find where you saved it, which is here, export, and it will basically just save over your existing textures. That's how you do that.